Hey there, welcome back to Super Chat Fridays. Every Friday we are live. It's been going on for 123 weeks. How are you? If we are not, if we haven't met before, my name is Sonal Behel. Lovely to have you join us. I'm a career strategist and I help people who are stuck in their career, looking at better careers. If we haven't hung out before, what are you doing <laughs> with your life? Let's hang out on LinkedIn together. I'm hopefully live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you're watching live, do not be shy. Come in in the comments and say, hello, Sonal, how's it going? Hi there, how's it going? We have such a juicy topic today. And the topic is all about those communication mistakes where we have said ABC and we're like, that's the end of the story. But the other party heard X, Y, Z. Now, what do you do to ensure this happens less and less? Because this is unfortunately a big problem, right? With our, not just our personal life, but also at the workplace. We're going to talk a little bit more about the workplace today, but I know this is going to help us in all different aspects of our, of our life. So we're going to talk about this with Sam Yankelevich, now, who is actually someone who's very familiar with this topic. He's written books on this, articles on it. He's got courses on LinkedIn learning on it. Can't wait to learn all about expensive communication mistakes and what not to do with Sam. Welcome, Sam, to Supercharge Fridays. Hi, Sonia. Good, good afternoon to you and uh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're listening from. Yeah, uh, for sure. We have friends joining us from around the world. Slovenia, Texas is in the house. Canada is in the house. You guys are awesome. Great to see you. Welcome. Do tell us where you're joining us from. We know this is going to be such a juicy topic, Sam. So before we, like, we're going to get right into it. And before we do that, tell us a little bit about, like, what do you do today? Well, let me give you a quick a quick background. You know, I mean, today I'm, I'm a LinkedIn learning instructor. I am also an interim operational uh, excellence manager. Uh, I go into troubled companies and try to help them. And most of the time I find that, you know, communication is a huge topic that, that, that happens in, the, in those cases. Uh, but I, I, um, uh, I, I was a global operations manager for many years and uh, I got to see the world. I actually got to see the world since a young kid. I, you know, if you, if you uh, uh, listen to my English, I have an accent and don't be fooled, I speak Spanish. That is my main language. I was born in Colombia, uh, South America. Uh, and at a very early, early age, I left, uh, went to live in Canada and Montreal. So I had to learn French and English and meet, you know, people from all over the place. And then after that, I moved to Tel Aviv where I did my high school. I had to learn a different language there as well. And then I went back to the U.S. I came to the U.S. to study uh, as an uh, engineering in Texas. And then I went back to my native country of Colombia. And then after that, I kept on traveling the world to look for tooling and materials and all kinds of stuff. So all my life, it has been this opportunity to see the world, meet different people, but also understand the issues uh, for getting things done with others uh, when you have to communicate in other languages, or even if you're just speaking in English, which you know uh, happens a lot as well, right? Yes, yes, yes. So I think that we're in a, we're very lucky, um, Sam, to have you here because you know, if you haven't gathered from what he just shared, right? So Sam, you've got direct experience, life experience and exposure to different communication styles. And I'm not even talking about linguistic differences, right? Because right. English alone can have so much. Even if you just live in Texas, you've never been out of, even there you can have communication um, misunderstandings, etc. So right. lovely, so lovely. We have folks joining us from around the world. It's so great to, guy, to have you guys joining us live. Um, and feel free, please, the fact that you're live. And if you're watching us in the replay, you're awesome too. Put in hashtag replay so we can you know, give you a little bit of love as well. Uh, but if you're watching us live right now, bring us, bring your questions because we have a practitioner here in the house with us. So it'll be, you know, Sam will be more than happy to help. So Sam, um, so first of all, before I forget, do follow Sam on LinkedIn. If you're watching on LinkedIn, he's already tagged. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, just make sure you follow Sam because uh, Sham, Sam, Sham. Sam shares great content and also, as he mentioned, he's a LinkedIn learning instructor. So there's lots of um, lots of content from a learning point of view that you can learn from. So Sam, what is the big deal? You know, still, you know, for a lot of us who are watching this, what is a mistake? Maybe it's a small thing and I just did it. It's forgotten. 
but help us to be on the same uh, page today. What is a right. mistake and, and right. why does it occur? Right. And so I, I, I think that word is, is, uh, is quite interesting. And I'll, I'll get to the word in a, in a second. I, I often go back to a, a famous quote by George Bernard Shaw, uh, who is a, you know, an Irish playwright that some, some of you might have heard the communication, you know, the, the, the biggest problem with, and I'm paraphrasing, he says the biggest yeah. problem with communication is the illusion yeah. that it ever, that it even happened. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. I think that when you're talking about the mistake, it's that that's the, that's, il, that's that illusion yeah. uh, somehow that we all believe that we communicated, but we really most often have sent a message thinking that the other person uh, received the message in yes. exactly the same way that we intended. Yes. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's that uh, illusion. Maybe that's kind of, you know, what you refer to as a, as a mistake. And, uh, you know, because I'm an engineer and lived in this global situation, I try to build processes behind this and try to explain it in that way. And, you know, for people that are listening in, most of you are familiar with the word quality, right? And uh, quality sorry, is... sorry, with, with the word? Sorry, quality. Quality, yes. Quality. Yes. And, you know, everywhere I, everywhere I went and most of the companies I worked with and worked for Everybody says quality is everybody's responsibility. And so when you start looking at quality, when something, when there's a reject, right? I call it a non-conformance, uh, that's a mistake. And so when I, look at pro when I look at communication as a process, which is, you know, part of the, part of the thing, right? And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more so that we can get the gist of what communication really is. Um, then that's that non-conformance, that mistake. Yeah. And... And that, you know, and, it, and we're all human, right? Yeah. Everybody's human. We all have our different backgrounds. We're wired differently. You know, even men and women are wired differently. Today, we have these generations that, you know, they, they invent words that you can't even, you know, you, you think they're in English, but, you know, and probably they are, yeah. but they invent words and they communicate completely different. So we have to be aware that we're human, yeah. that we are wired differently. Uh, my, bra my background is different than the backgrounds of everybody that is on, 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 on the show listening right now. Uh, and so those backgrounds have a lot to do with the fact that how we learned a language or how we learned how to communicate is very individual for each and every one of us because the way that we absorb a word or, or, or the language has a lot to do with the context and the environment we were in when that language came in. Yeah so, yeah. so that's important. Okay. I'm so glad you said that. It's different. And obviously, why does it occur? We're all different. It's not necessarily better than someone else. Your communication exactly. style and how you grew up understanding. It's not like, you know, I'm a native English speaker. So I'm a little bit better than someone from Colombia. It's not the point. It's Correct. different and it's about adapting. Right? So Exactly. Correct. Yeah. And um, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's very important, uh, Sonal. That yeah, yeah, there's no right or wrong, and uh, no. yeah, there is no right or wrong. But so the word is contrast, and I think you have to keep that in mind that there's a that you have to contrast how you understand and how they, you know, how the other person understands. Understand. No, so, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And and Rich says, oh, it's so cool to learn from a fellow engineer. All the engineers in the house are like, oh, so cool. <laughs> so <laughs> love that. So before we move on, I saw a couple of interesting um, questions here. And Raj says, oh, this is very relevant for a guy like me. Raj, it's relevant for everyone, not just for engineers here. You know? <laughs> I don't think I singled you out here. Hey, Raj. It's really relevant uh, for all of us. And for Zane, who's watching um, from Belgium, she says, you know, communication is two-sided, right? Is the problem with communication um, misunderstanding? Um, so, Farzani, we're going to be getting into that. That's what what are the things we're going to be talking about. And Chanakya is saying, can you elaborate on how to speak authoritatively when the role demands being humble? Yeah, yeah. So, if you don't mind, let me address that toward the end. Yes. When I give some solutions, please. When we get into solution, Chanakya, put your horses. We promise we're going to get into it and talk about it. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. a bit more detail. So, so let me let me give you some stories. But before that, I want to share kind of the what I see as a and I have a, a twelve step process. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go into a very simple way 
of understanding it, you know, from an engineering perspective and as a process. But do so, share the stories. We love stories here on Supertouch. Yeah, I will, I will definitely bring the story. Pay attention, when... everyone. Get your coffee. Get your tea. Um, Sam has his water. He's joining us bright and early from North South Carolina. Yep. Dan is in the house. A quick shout out to Dan in California because it's five in the morning. So amazing. Sam, we are all ears. Good, good, good. So, and we need to be all ears because listening is part of the of, yes. of the communication process, right? Yes. So, so what I, you know, so and this is very simple, you know. So you have you have an, a message that you want to send. So you are the the person sending the message to somebody that you want them to understand and do something, right? So that message inside that message bubble, there is a meaning, and what we're transmitting is not the message, but we're trying to transmit the meaning inside the message, inside that mm -hmm. bubble. So mm -hmm. imagine a bubble and a message mm -hmm. inside a message. That meaning, then you know, we we send it, we transfer it, either we're speaking or we're sending an email or maybe a text or maybe even in a written way in a contract or something like that. We've written something and we're sending it to somebody else. That person is completely individual, like we said before. Everybody understands things different. So anybody that has heard the word AI recently, everybody's talking about AI and they think it's artificial intelligence. I say it's always interpreting. So keep that in mind because the brain is wired to always be interpreting and making assumptions. So that person receiving the message is going to be interpreting whether you like it or not. It's not, you know, you, you have no control over that. Get over it. Um, and then that person is going to be interpreting. So now you have message A that is being sent by the, you know, by the person intending and message, and the other person translates that into message B. Yeah. Now you have what you call a mistake. You have that non-conformance between the two. And unless there's awareness that that's yeah. happening, there's gonna be a lot of assumptions. And, you know, in social situations, it could be funny. And it typically is, and you can get over it. You know, you laugh it off, you, you know, and then you move on. But at work, it doesn't, it doesn't jive. So, uh, you know, I was still working at, as, a, as, a, as a managing director in a, a German company uh, back in 2013. We were making wiring harnesses. And I read the story of the Airbus 380. Uh, and I almost fell off my chair because that hit home when you know, all of these people from uh, Spain and England and Germany and France and Italy and all of these other countries are trying to come together to build this very, very complex, very large uh, airplane. And well, it didn't take off on time because unfortunately, because of a lot of miscommunication, which was one of the highest root causes of this thing, they ended up having, they, when they started building the, the, the plane, they started putting the fuselage parts together. Yeah. And the wiring was too short. Some of the wires were too short. Imagine that metaphor where two wires are not connected. And because of this, they, the plane doesn't take off. So for me, that has been kind of uh, a foundational story when I get up on stage and when I train teams and, and teach people. Because it's just a fantastic way of understanding. And, and you know, we talk about the cost. It costs an excess of 6.2 billion euros. Okay, I, I don't know. I, I know you live in Europe, uh, so now I think maybe you ended up paying some of that in your, in your taxes in Belgium. Yeah, we can't <laughs> escape that. My goodness. And uh, there's a very interesting comment here about uh, mistakes, right? So Raj says, no such thing as a mistake. Every time you make a mistake, you learn something about doing it right. You're right, Raj. But I think as well, based on what Sam said, it's a very costly lesson as well. You can, yes. you can yeah. say tomato, tomato. We're not going to get into semantics here. The point is, yeah. of course, every experience has a lesson but uh, I would call it a right. spade is spade, right? It is, yeah. <laughs> it is a yeah. mistake so, here. I mean, and, and look, not all, I mean, not everything is $6.2 billion. Early on yeah, in my yeah. career, I yeah. had a situation in Spanish in, in a factory that I was working for. Uh, we had to do a maintenance for a big piece of equipment on a Saturday. So on Friday, the day before, I asked the foreman, the maintenance foreman, to please take down the breakers so that we can have a safe, you know, maintenance of this press. So, you know, uh, the next day on Saturday, we walked in and we see this big metal box sitting in the operations room. And we said, what's this? Well, he said, you asked, you asked me to take down the breakers. What we meant was to shut them down. And he took the whole box 
off of the wall. And it took three or four days after that because we had to get permission from the electrical company to hook back, back up. So the company was down for three or four days. We couldn't produce for a simple misunderstanding. So it cost, you know, uh, tens of thousands of dollars, but it was still, you know, it was still quite a, quite an, an incident. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and based on all, the, all these, you know, stories and anecdotes, the data is out there. It is expensive. It is costly. Um, and hence, um, let's get into what we can do about it, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One so, of the things a lot of us want to learn from you. And and um, yeah. and I'm also of the belief that, you know, and, and you can see if you agree with it, but as an individual, that's the best we can do to ensure we are as clear. Like the message and the interpretation of the message are pretty much on you know yeah. the same yeah. that's uh we can't necessarily control all the other factors um to Absolutely. a very large extent so let's talk about this because i also see questions coming in so we're gonna get into them based on um our so you said you have a 12 step 12 step process so talk to us about the highlights of those because i think coming from your uh structured engineering mindset i find that personally very refreshing um, you know, it's not purely based on feeling, et cetera, but it's very kind of step by step. That's totally my jam. So, yeah. 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 So the step by step, I'll, I'll, I think it's maybe a little bit too long, and, uh, but I, I'll, I'll do some of it. But bef yeah. before that, so now I think the, the part, the biggest, you know, the biggest part of the solution first is to have the awareness. And I think you yeah. brought it up. Yeah. Um, you know, we have to know that this, uh, this process is very important to get things done with others. This means... Uh, so I call communication a an invisible process. And so one of my books, for example, is called Walking the Invisible Gemba, and it talks a lot about communication. The 12 steps that are in there. It's also in one of my LinkedIn learning uh, instruction videos. Yeah. Uh, so, but th that's one of the key is awareness. And awareness, because it is invisible, you have to somehow uh, make sure that you're paying attention to it. Because even if it's invisible, it doesn't mean it's not kicking your butt. You know, pardon my French. So it's 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 a very important, you know, so it's very important to just be aware yeah. that other people are going to understand things differently. This brings to the point that we are not capable of being successful in a work environment without others. So we think as individuals and we live in our heads. Uh, but to get things done, we have to do it with others. There's no choice. And so we live in a very interdependent yes. world. Yes. Interdependent means that we depend on each other. Yes. And in order to get things done, we have to communicate. We have to coordinate. We have to collaborate. There's a lot of co's in there. And so I bring the co's into it because we often forget the meaning of communication. And I want to make sure that we, that, you know, that we can maybe have that as a basis to say, Communication is when both parties or more than one party reach a common understanding. Yeah. Communication, community, uh, you know, they they all come from that same source yeah. of common. The, the root word. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of the root word. The, the, the other thing that I, that I uh, think it's very important to bring up is that to get things done and, you know, in engineering and, and my background is more in operational excellence and lean and the lean and we always talk about getting things done right the first time. Because if yes. you have to repeat, it's very expensive, right? It's costly. Yes. That's when the cost comes in. So I talk about the fact that communication precedes action. It comes before action. So you have to get your communication right yes. before you can actually get the action right. And so this is part of that awareness that we have to do. In fact, I play on words so now a lot. And so... I talk when I when I write precedes. I also use the word seed, mm -hmm. like when you sow the seeds. Yeah, I yeah, always yeah, say yeah. it precedes action. Yeah. So it's yeah. the seed of action. Yeah. And you, if you if you if you sow that, and if if you don't put water in it, and you don't nurture that seed, yeah. then your actions and and your you know your your results are going to be very expensive. Yeah. So so that's you know that's a, that's a, an important. Uh, you know, that's an important oh, that fact. is so cool. I I am a huge fan of playing uh, <laughs> uh, play on words. So this is a, a great example. I, I want to just repeat what you said to make sure anybody in the audience who's been resting or sleeping or looking at something <laughs> on their phone, stop. Uh, you know, the multitasking is a myth. Okay. There's lots of research to prove that it doesn't work. Communication 
the definition of a good communication is when, when you said two parties, right? So basically it could be more than two. All parties have come to a common agreement. Right. That is a good communication. Yep. And communication precedes action. Precede, yep. we know the word precede comes before, but precede can also be precede, which is a word. The combination is something that Sam has invented, which makes a lot of sense because it has been planted. You got to make sure it's been planted. There's enough soil, enough water, enough sunlight. Otherwise, right. it's not going to happen because we will assume. I'm guessing assume is one of the enemies of good uh, communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assumption. Right. Yeah, because we can't stop it. You know, assumptions. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're always... You know, we're always assuming. Our brain is wired to always assume. Yeah. We, we no, come from this is. reptile or whatever yes. brain where, you know, we were yes. chased by, by big animals or something. Yes. So no, we that's always, true. That's true. Yeah. And I love this as well. Get things right the first time. I'm, I'm Green Belt Six Sigma certified as well. So <laughs> the whole methodology is so like, and, and it's such a good uh, metaphor for uh, communication as well. Get it right the first time so that yep. there is not too much, um, you know, uh, back and forth in there. Right. Um, and um, fantastic. I just want to uh, give a quick shout out um, from uh, the LinkedIn learning team. In fact, Almira is here. Hello there. Good morning. It's a great metaphor about the wires being too short. It's so funny to listen, but I'm sure it must have been an awful thing to be a part of um, oh, yeah. you know, in that team, in the boardroom. Like, you can just imagine how horrible it is. Receiving and interpreting information as part of good communications. No, 100%. And right. and G is in Texas, and she says, I lived and breathed the A3 methodology in one of my roles. And the moment you said, Jim, <laughs> So, no, definitely uh, walk. And, and G's uh, very kindly linked to Sam's book. G, you're awesome. Thank you so much. So check out because Sam has, there's a lot more where this came from, right? Yeah. So Sam, there's so many things you talked about and, and somebody said, hey, you know, I want to know more about uh, the 12 steps, 12, 12 stop uh, process. Somebody wrote something about that uh, and wanted right. to know in more detail. Ah, Raj, Raj, check out the LinkedIn learning course. You're going to get everything in there. So it will be uh, on LinkedIn learning. So awesome. So um, Sam, continue, please. Um, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I think it was a G mentioned the um, the A3. A, A3 thinking, by the way, is one of my courses on LinkedIn learning. And uh, what, I'm sorry, just curious. I don't know what that means. What is that? A3, A3? So A3 methodology was developed by Toyota for, yeah. okay. uh, they initially developed it to solve problems, but it, it okay. has become... A communication tool because it, it it connects the front lines all the way to the top so it got it hit, gets that vertical communication and it gets the horizontal communication across all of the people that are taking care of the customer so uh, so that's you know that's one of my courses up, up on, um, fantastic. on LinkedIn fantastic. and it's all about you know people if you think, want to oh, know more and you're hungry just check out the courses because you're going to get way like so much more out of it than uh, you know a 30 40 minute like, I appreciate I appreciate um, that so so uh, let me let, uh, so that so I'll, I'll get to the twelve step uh, somehow, even though I may not remember every step off by heart. But uh, I will. What I can do so now is later I can maybe upload a copy of, of you know a copy of the diagram for you, and you yeah. can share it with your. Uh, yeah, your, but you know, audience. even if you walk us through the twelve step without yeah. getting into detailed explanation of each of that, even if you yeah. just walk us through that, I think that would help plant the seeds. <laughs> okay, for, there you go. For future okay. action. <laughs> there you go. So, so, and that might, you know, and that might help to bring the, I guess, the solution into what, yes. you know, people are, are looking yes. for. But, you know, because I, I actually, to be honest, I didn't prepare to do the 12 steps on this. I, I understand. On, on your show, I understand. I'm can, sorry. I, I, don't mean to, so, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go quickly over those. So we'll go okay. again. If you remember, I, st I started with this idea of, uh, of the process of communication. And by the way, it's also it's a process, but it's also a goal if you think about it, yeah. right? So it's a process and a goal because you want to get to that common understanding. Um, uh, you guys just making sure that you are watching and everything is okay. Um, hmm. um, we may have lost. Sam, you there? That's okay. This happens all the time. Sam, we're losing you. He'll be back. He'll be back. But I'm uh, busy keeping... There you are. You're back. Is everything okay with the internet? 
I, I it's yeah we I guess I lost connection for a few yeah there. no I was you checking said. my internet hopefully this isn't me this time but don't worry okay. you're back um, all right so go ahead so, <laughs> so I want to make this distinction with it with a, with any process first of all the you know the distinction uh is that I am talking about not in the social situation where you really have to pay attention to you know to each of the steps when it's a yes. social situation you're more relaxed right so in a very specific situation where I call it um, communication for action. This means yeah. you, somebody's requesting something to get done from somebody else. And that yeah. other person has to understand exactly what they need to get done in order to be successful. Sometimes we, we actually do this, unfortunately, we don't think about this and we create our own uh, failure because we don't communicate properly. And then the other person goes off and you know they, they, they do it differently than we, than we actually intended them to do. But anyway, so you start out with that idea uh and then, so you have the intention so then, are, are you saying step number one of the 12-step process is intention is intention is okay. what is what is it that you are intending to send to the other person you have to first have what is it that you're intending to get and to to you know so that you clearly understand what the message should be before you even get to the next step yes you have to be very clear in your mind yes. what is it that you want to communicate Yes. And often this this is, uh, you know, sometimes we just rush and yes. we think we, you know, so that's the first step. Next, you're going to uh, start crafting the message. So that means you're going to decide, are you going to craft, you know, you're going to craft this message uh, and you start thinking, what do I need to include in here? And I'm not going to go into many details, but you yeah. want to make sure that you have all the information, that it's clear, yes. that it's not distorted and all this other stuff. Then you're going to choose a medium. How are you going to communicate with the person? Because today we work, we work, some of us work remote, some of us work face to face, some of us work hybrid. Yes. Uh, and so sometimes you communicate verbally, sometimes by phone, sometimes by email, sometimes yeah. by contract. Yeah. You know, um, and so there's many ways to communicate. Today we communicate on all these platforms and we communicate. So for the engineers that are on here, we communicate with drawings and, and technical specifications. And how often are those 100% clear and how often are those, you know, not 100% clear? So you choose, you're choosing your medium um, and then, and then you're delivering that message. Yeah. You know, and I think I probably missed a step in there, but no that's, worries. No you know, worries. That, that's probably, you know, that's the, the important part of the, of, of, you know, of the portion. Now think about this, the person sending and remember, we're all humans. I'm not yes. talking about machines sending messages in between. Uh, that's that's not taking responsibility. We have to take responsibility for how we craft our message. Okay. So now this so now this message is being sent out. Remember, the message has is an envelope, and inside that envelope is a meaning. Now it's on its way to the other person. So now you mentioned multitasking a few minutes ago, right? So you're sending that message. And the other person has to listen. So now you have, you have this person listening. What happens when they're multitasking? So they're on their phone, mm. they're, they're on the computer, right? They're on a, they're on a show with Sonal uh, and, and they get an email from you or you're on a Zoom call with them and you're kind of paying attention, but you're not paying attention. A hundred percent focus. Without 100% focus, it's not going to work. Multitasking is noise. Yeah. I call multitasking a competition for signals. And Ooh. you're and, and is so that one of the steps. Sorry, I'm just like checking. yeah, yeah. Multi so one of, in one of the steps is the listening. Is that first receiving? Yes. And if the person is not available to receive the message, right? They're not available to receive the message. They're not going to be listening. Yeah. Now, and, and you said multitasking is multitasking a, to me is, is just a, another it's an equivalent of noise because it's co it's competing signals. So you said multitasking is competition for noise. Yeah. For, yeah. It's a, it's it's, a, cool. it's like a noise. Because you know you're creating your own noise, and then you know what happens with noise you can't you can't hear the message clearly. No. Okay. So this is, I think, one of the key things. You know, they say that listening is half of the half of the equation of yes. communication. I'm a very poor listener. You know, all this, uh, you know, I recently did my disc 
assessment again because we're doing a workshop and so i did mine again and i'm still a poor listener so now you know i'm an i think i'm You're an kidding. i or yeah i'm an i and an s and uh it says that i'm a poor listener so i i am practicing and i'm trying very hard uh you know to uh to pay attention my wife says that i'm going deaf and you know but that's different right <laughs> but anyway so so now so very important so as far as as far as uh recommendations really listen yeah and you know perk up your ears be there and it's really about respect yeah if you know if you're on the other side you have to show respect and listen for that signal so you can fully understand another human being yes it's yes. not a machine remember we're talking about humans yes. on the other side and so you know so uh, uh you know uh the dalai lama said um when you're talking is you're only repeating what you know but when you're listening you just might learn something new yes and i've so heard that as well with, listen yes. with curiosity because you just might learn something you might learn from something. the other person Yep. And this is, you know, so this is, this is. Okay. Uh, so we're done. We're four down. Okay. So we're, we're so, recap. yeah. So, we're so now you have the list. Crafting the message, right. choose the right medium, listen with respect. So we're four right. down, eight to go. So let's say that the person has now listened. What yes. do they next do? They're going to interpret. Yes. Right. Now they, yes. now they, 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 they received it mechanically, let's say. Now they're going to interpret the message. Now in between that, sometimes I put in a step that says, at least acknowledge to the person mm. that sent you the message, acknowledge that you received the message. Yes. Now we do that face to face. We do it automatically. Yes. Uh, and sometimes we send the message that we, or we, we, we pretend that we received it, but you know, when somebody's not listening, right? So yes. you yes. know that, uh, but when you're working remote, have yes. the decency to say, Hey, I, I got your email or I, yes. I got your prints. Uh, I'm going to respond back to you tomorrow. I might have some questions. I, I agree. And honestly, I think this is the one step that you talked about, acknowledge receipt. I think this is the quickest one. And it's the least, yeah. uh, the thing that takes the least amount of time. Well received. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have to yeah. be, you know, an, an yeah. essay on it. And so I, that and is I'll, cool. Yeah. Go ahead. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Sorry. Sorry I interrupted it. Um, no, okay. And so here's the, here's the thing. How many times have you, you know, it happened to me and it happens to a lot of my colleagues. Friday afternoon, you're in a rush. You put all these emails in your in your outbox, and then you click and you send and you turn off your computer. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> you're done. Well, it never made it to the server, so the message never never made it to the other person. Then on Monday you call them and say, "Hey, I don't have a response from you." And I said, "I never received an email." Oh, it never. And left then you look. The, in, it never left the outbox. It right? never left the outbox for whatever <laughs> reason, you know. And uh, or, or or you sent it to the wrong email or you or you know, I got to like say that. this. I got to say this, you know, when I was in corporate as well. So or even not in corporate, even today, a couple of roles that I do where I'm a supplier or a client to someone and, and they have a huge thing they need from me. And I get it on a Friday evening. I find that a little selfish. I've got to be honest, because it's like you're expecting work on the weekend. Like uh, the timing of communication matters, um, I'm yep. guessing, as well. Right. Um, Absolutely. For effective communication. Absolutely. OK. And then we said uh, step number six. You so said now, they, now they interpret the message. Interpretation, yeah. Okay, now let's say we stop there. And I, I'm, yes. I'm probably missing some steps, but let's say that we stop that the person interprets the message and then goes out there and takes action at that moment. Hmm. And they interpreted the message in an incomplete way, in a different way than the, other, than the person intended. Again, not right and wrong. They interpreted the way they interpreted it. It was their yes. own AI, always interpreting, yes. right? The way they're wired and the way their background and context for the for the you know for the message. So what happens there? That's when you have that cost. Okay. Yeah. And so the the next steps really are about entering into a dialogue. And the dialogue is a is just another conversation to clarify. Did you mean this? Did you mean that? Mm. How would you like me you know, to, to have that, that conversation going? And I can tell you this is also an opportunity to have the respect mm. with the other person, to have them really uh, express how they understood. Sometimes, and I think somebody early on asked about uh, how do you deal with uh, communication in a command and control mm. environment? I think that was mm -hmm. one of the first questions. Yes. And John, this is yeah. this yeah. is this is the important part because if you don't allow the other person to express how they understood, then 
what's going to happen is you're going to have lack of psychological safety. People are going to uh, are going to stop communicating. They're going to start really just, uh, you know, keeping staying separate. They're going to say, yes, I understood. And then you know what happens after that? You get the disconnect and you get the cost. Yeah. So that's an opportunity to really show respect, have those conversations, get to a complete understanding. And I call that, re you know, you, you, in Six Sigma or in Lean, you would call it getting to a standard. Yeah. So agreement yep. is the standard. Yeah. And then you take action. Yeah. And so I do. So, the, so in my 12 step process, the last process is really the action. Yeah. And, and so those are kind of the, of, of the steps. Like I said, I can send you a diagram of what I have. No, I, I understand. But I think that if anybody would like to know more, I think just get the course uh, because we're not doing justice otherwise to Sam's brilliance by just, you know, compressing everything in a quick conversation. So those who are like fans of step-by-step -step process, getting things right, and I hate yeah. the word soft skills, right? But the combination of those power skills, life skills, as well as the technical skills, that is what makes us a superstar. Right. And um, what you just said about um, after number six, number seven, clarify your interpretation. I think that is where a lot you will see a lot of laziness where people yes. are like, I don't want to, it's too late, it's, fri it's Friday, for example, or I, I think I got it. I think I got it. There's also assumption. And I um, saw somebody yep. write, as, assume is like, make an ass of you and me. It really is. Honestly, Santosh, there is no other I way. I love to, that. Hey, um, Santosh, thank you. That's yeah, we've, <laughs> I've been saying this for years. I heard about this in, when I was back in India. And it's so true, make an ass. And it comes down to lack of respect. Um, for yeah. uh, the person. So we have like a little bit of a jumble of those eight step, uh, the 12 step process. We kind of did it in um, eight steps because there's a lot more that you'll get when you do. Sam, what is the name of the course, the LinkedIn learning course where they can learn more about this? Oh, you got me. So there's, so I have, <laughs> so one of the courses, if you look on project management, there's uh, three project okay. management courses. One of them yeah. is um, working with other cultures yeah. in, in projects. The other one is called, um, international projects yeah um you know if they go into my if they go into my uh, into linkedin learning and they look yeah. look me yeah. up then they'll see the the six courses in there perfect and so and Almira are... has been very kind as well to to put the link to your a3 oh thank you uh, the a3 thank you, Almira. Almira you're amazing thank you so much so when when you go to the link that Almira has shared if you're watching on youtube check out the link on linkedin you just click on it and there you see, I think, Sam, your LinkedIn learning profile, right? And in yes. the LinkedIn learning profile, you can see all the courses by the published author. So yeah. get to your heart's content. <laughs> yeah. And, and feel, yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm easy to, you know, if you have questions on which, what, what lesson, if you don't want to watch yeah. the whole course, you know, that's yeah. fine. I can send you the which specific lessons. Uh, Perfect. because I know time is the, of, you know, time is of the, yes, but at the same time, I will say if you're interested in learning more, there are no shortcuts, right? You got to do the work. There, are, the there work. are no shortcuts. That's exactly there are no right. shortcuts. So, so Sam, yeah. we're going to get into question mode now. I've taken up a little more of your time than we intended. Okay. So I'm just going to pause. So Chanakya, hopefully, you know, this has helped you because the eight step process will help to, um, adapt to cultures, different culture and different, uh, you know, leadership styles. Yeah. How big, Sh uh, Shivam says, you know, Sam, you know, you talked about the fact that you're originally from Colombia, you're living in South Carolina. So, you know, you have a more exotic name. What does accent play our, oh. in our mother tongue influence, our accent in effective communication? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's, an, that's a very important one. So, um, so one of the things I've done after I left my last job in 2013 is train global organizations and their teams to communicate with each other. And that that thing about the accent came up big yeah. time in every single facilitation workshop. So I live in South Carolina. My accent is definitely not from South Carolina. And I actually have a lot of issues uh, understanding people here. And they speak English. And so just just speaking in your own language in English, uh, it's it's difficult when you're face to face. It's a lot easier because yes. when you're face to face, you know, remember we as humans, words are only about seven to 10 percent of the meaning that, you know, it gets transmitted with words. Everything else is emotion and body language. You, yes. you know, my, you know, you can see from my all of my Italian, the, the, the way that I move my hands, you can, you know, <laughs> so 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 when you're online, 
in a virtual meeting and somebody from France is trying to speak English, you have to pay more attention yes. because they will have a very deep accent. You live in yes. Belgium, uh, so now you know that the French accent can be very heavy. Sure. Uh, Colombian accents are also sometimes complicated. Indian you accent, know. and there is no such thing as Indian because they're different parts of India. So, you know, so Shivam, so, as a listener, you need to pay more attention. And I'm also thinking from a point of view of speaker, right? So, Sam, what would you advise to Shivam who, like his own accent as a speaker? If you can, I mean, if you can improve and practice, that's fine. I think you can slow down so that you can elaborate and be more, you know, come across in a, in a, in a more clear way. But you know, it's, it's difficult, you know, sometimes I, I mean, so I record, I record myself a lot, uh, yeah. especially because I'm trying to figure out when I'm doing too many ums and pausing yeah. and, you know, all this other stuff. So I'm trying to train myself because I, yeah. I, I, I want to do a lot more public speaking. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. you record yourself and listen to yourself and try to improve. And it's really just sometimes a few words. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's again about respect. And so, as long as there's no discrimination no. with an accent, because that happens yeah. a lot, uh, you should. If you show respect, then you're going to be listening and to say, "Hey, uh, sorry, I wasn't clear, or I yeah. didn't, I didn't understand. Did you mean this or that?" Yeah. Have that conversation, and yeah. I, and I'll uh, I'll say this to was it was it Shiwan? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll say this: the more you communicate with somebody and have the opportunity to create a relationship. And I didn't talk enough about relationships, but when mm. you establish a relationship, we need to have you back on Super Josh Fridays for that. Then, one. then the conversation is different, and then the accent becomes an a non-issue because you start really getting that other person and understanding what they're saying. Sometimes even without the words, you know what they're intending to say, and so that that so the you know the, the longer you have that relationship with someone, the less the the issue with the accent happens at least that's 100 percent experience yeah 100 percent. and i'm getting a lot of questions on how can we get so you can you're very welcome to watch the replay it will be in my linkedin um you know content and my activity section or also on youtube uh rich says hey your accent is excellent and sam yours is you know quite neutralized right so that's very kind you know rich and i at the same time i want to say the word this person has an accent i don't understand the this is a separate conversation, but everyone has an accent, right? There's a West, Midwest, there's Spanish, there's Hindi, um, you know, there's Punjabi, there's an accent. So it's not that there is a dominant English and everyone else, everyone has an accent. And I think it's a, we live in a time where we need to be a bit more proud of who we are and where we come from, as opposed to trying to conform. Um, because that kind of strips away a little bit. That's personal, uh, my own opinion. Sunshine is saying, Sam, does it matter if we're introverted? How do we communicate effectively? Ah, absolutely, yeah. So I talked about how we're wired, right? And, yes. Uh, yes. And our our uh, disc profiles and stuff like that. So, yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're introverted or extroverted, that's the way you're wired. Yes. But you have to be aware, regardless, that if you want to get something done, you're going to have to bring it out. So otherwise, yeah. there's going to be a lot of assumptions. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know it's inevitable so yes. somehow you're gonna have to learn either you can do it if you can't do it verbally learn how to do it written practice 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 yeah and, and again i think you, you hit it you hit it so now mistakes in this thing are it's yeah. just we're, we're all humans yeah and it's just the way it's going to be and and as long as there's i think what is it close to eight billion people now in the world yes there's going to be eight billion of us and eight billion <laughs> Patients, and so suck it up, and um, you know, just uh, try to do the best you can. But you have to somehow get the words out and get your message out and your meaning to that other person somehow. Otherwise, the assumptions are just going to prevail, and that's not yeah. good. No, absolutely. Hey, Lee's here. Imagine hearing the words broken English growing up, right? <laughs> and and Lee's, Lee's native there, so it's it's uh, it's hilarious. I'm going to take in a last question here. And um, I see this. Uh, okay, Raj says, do we need to understand how to interpret when someone else has communicated to you? Like it's how, no, I'm sorry. I don't think this is a question. So let's see. While it is important how one communicates, does one really understand what has 
been communicated to him by another individual? It seems like a crazy maze. Did you understand the question, Sam? I kind of understand the question, and I'll, I'll let me let me answer this way. Um, it, the uh, the meaning of your message is in the result you get. Yeah. So if, for example, you get the disconnect and you get a yeah. bad a bad action, right? Yeah. Uh, then you know that there was miscommunication. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and so I, you know, so that's, that's how I typically explain it. And now the best way to do that is to clarify it front and to have that dialogue. Yeah. To make sure that you're exactly on the same page than the other person. And you could do that verbally. But even so, uh, Raj, you might be right. You might think that you did. And then you go out there and do the action. And then the yeah. action doesn't come out right. Yeah. Now, sorry to talk about root cause analysis, but we, how often? Don't be sorry. I love root cause so, RCA. So, how often do you put in a root cause analysis tree the co the category communication? You know, I always do my fishbone diagrams, and yeah. I put the word communication on there, and start talking about that because it's invisible. It doesn't mean it's not affecting no. your processes, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's one of the rec recommendations I have in one of my books. I said start just putting that bone on the fishbone, call it communication, and ask the question. Specifically, what about communication might have created this problem at the head of the fish? So when you when you do that, you start getting the awareness of everybody on your team to think, oh, maybe it does have something to do. You know, absolutely. Maybe, maybe these soft issues have something to do with all the hard stuff that we have to go through, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. For sure, for sure. And and uh, thank you so much, uh, Raj, for asking. And. Pushk Raj has been amazing. He's probably been Googling, like his life depends on it. And he's got the 12 steps written down based on everything we talked about. And I think it's in more detail. So intention, crafting, medium, rehearsal, document. It's all amazing stuff. Love so it. definitely Love check it. out. Nice. Uh, appreciate your hard work. You were multitasking. You were paying attention. <laughs> so <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um in fact, he has a question now. I'm going to take this as the last question. So what if, um, Sam, this is a broader one, right? What if the higher ranked manager is not listening to what you're communicating? What do you do then? Right, right. That's a, so that's a very good question. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult question in some cultures. Yes. So remember, I, one of the things I teach is, is cross-cultural communication. And in some cultures, a higher, a, you know, hierarchies, are accepted and expected where you know you expect that the boss is the boss and you have to do as they as they yeah. want and you know what uh sorry but when that happens and they don't listen then you're going to have that cost yes regardless you're going to have that cost so i you know I've, I've really been formed and trained by the thinking at, at a company like toyota that has uh that had a very difficult time because the japanese culture is that they yes. respect hierarchy so how did they manage yes to, to transform this and be able to communicate and all this other stuff is by showing respect and and that is the key and so by showing respect when you're asking somebody to do something and you want it to come out right you could push 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 and they're going to say and you're going to ask them did you get it and they're yeah. going to say they're going to say yes but at the end of the day, they didn't get it and they didn't understand two weeks later that boss will have set up his own failure, even though he's still going to point fingers at the other person. I can't help that other person, you know, transform. Now, uh, the, the, a better way of doing this that I think is showing respect is asking, making sure that the other person really understands the expectation up front before the action takes place. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll give you a little nugget here of wisdom. Something yeah. that I learned from reading um, a book by an FBI agent that says, don't ask questions that are going to prompt a yes, because that's mm. too easy. Are you talking about Chris Voss? Yes. Yeah. So remember Classic. in his book, he says, get to a no. And so let yes. me give you a nugget. Let me give you a, a good nugget for you. And you can write that for your, for your, for your team. So when you're asking, when you're the boss and you're asking for somebody to do something and you want to get a no, ask a scaling question and say, uh, Let's say that it's, hey, Sonal, uh, I just, I asked, you know, I just asked you to, uh, to do this or that. On a scale from one to 10, how confident are you that you understood what you have to get done? And so, Sonal, you're going to say, if you say 10, 
then I'm going to bid you farewell and I'm going to pray that you really got a 10. But, yeah. but this gives you an opportunity to say, Sam, I think maybe a six. Yeah. Oh, so good as opposed to As opposed to saying, hey, Sam, did you get it? Yes, no. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Because that sets, up, that sets up to a very quick, you know, that's a lazy approach. Yeah. Instead, yeah. you're saying, let's have a conversation here. And so, yeah. so now, why did you say six and not four? Yeah. Oh, because I think this and that. So you have that. And then what would it take to get to a 10? Now we're getting to the meat of it then, right? Then, right. And then, then you have that conversation to get ah, to the 10, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and then, and then, and, and by the way, I'm showing respect to you, Sonal, because I'm yes. giving you the opportunity also to tell me how you're going to do it. And when you invent how you're going to do it, then I am sure that you're going to get it done right. Because if I tell you how to do it, then it's again, it's command and control. Yeah. And there's going to be, there's always going to be a pushback, whether it's silent pushback or direct pushback, right? So those are those are some, you know, some yes. ways to really apply this thinking of, you know, getting to a no. Yes. Uh, in, instead of a quick yes, because yes. those quick yeses are very dangerous. Absolutely. No, this was amazing. So thank you so much. I think this has been such a cool session. And I think I speak on behalf of everyone who's kindly here joined us from around the world. There's so much we have shared. I'm going to do a super quick recap, right? So the whole topic today was all about communication mistakes. What are the lessons we can take away and how can we avoid them? How can we minimize them, right? So follow Sam to get a lot more deep into the whole thing of communication, cultural change, you know, misunderstandings, all of that. We Today, we what did we talk about? If you're joining us late, definitely make sure you watch the replay because we covered this in more detail. What is a mistake? And, and, you know, Sam, you defined it for us, right? So to make sure we're all on the same, like literally playing on the same field, why do these mistakes occur and why are they costly? We had examples of like billions of euros or billions of dollars worth of mistakes and what they cost us as taxpayers. So it's everyone's problem, right? It's not Boeing or Airbus's problem, right? And how can we as individuals ensure we minimize these? So we went into like so much into all of this. We talked about a 12-step process. And if you want to know more, check out the LinkedIn learning course that Sam has. We talked about preceding communication, so much cool stuff. And I love this um, thing. Thing that you just said uh, right now, uh, don't ask questions that will prompt a yes. Go a bit deeper, right? Peel up, peel the onion a bit more. You'll get a lot more um, out of it. And Sam, um, before we let you go, a little bird tells me there's a book that's coming out in August. Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I I've written four books, so now most of them are. I mean, they're all business related. Yes, and they're yes. about lean. They're all about lean communication. So Clearly, four lean. books were not enough because you had to go and write a fifth one now. Well, I I got the itch to write a personal book and more of a self help book, and it's it's also about communication. The title yeah. of the book is going to be an interview with failure. An interview with failure, and it's oh, about okay. communication with yourself. It yeah. is about how you communicate with yourself. And so I'm it, right now the cover is being designed. Uh, I'm finishing my 15th draft because when you write a book, you never done, you know, it's never ready. And uh, so I'm about Talk about getting things right the first time. That doesn't never, work when you're an author. Never. And, uh, and the good thing about, you know, I'm going to be self-publishing. So that's a good thing because then, you know, if you're on plan, do, check, act mode, you can always then go back, correct it and republish it. And uh, yeah. No harm done. I'm not perfect. I'm a human. I err and uh, I acknowledge that. So, but it, I hope to have it ready in August, maybe September. But uh, yeah, so it's a yeah a, an interview with failure and perfect. Uh, perfect. So think, please I follow be Sam on LinkedIn the because folks. there'll be a lot more information about um, you know the launch of the book and and everything uh, that Sam is working on. I love the title, an interview with failure. Um, I can't wait uh, to read it. Oh, I want to say a quick hello to Julie. Julie's in the house. Julie's going to be on my podcast. She's written a, a book as well called Promotions Are So Yesterday, which is an um, amazing um, topic as well. Julie, thank you for joining. And she's thank also you. in California, so I appreciate it because it's super early for her. Sam, this is amazing. You're so cool, so generous with your time. We have all learned so much, and I'm pretty sure that you are going to be back right here on Supercharge Fridays, because we have barely touched like, the tip of the iceberg um, today on all these cool topics. So look forward to having you here. Thank you guys for being here with us. Uh, do follow Sam on LinkedIn. Check out his LinkedIn learning courses. Check out the books. So much knowledge in that 
in that brain got to tap it got to make the most of it please join me next week at the same time i have no idea i'm going to have a guest or i'm going to be solo we're going to figure it out but on 17th of june we're going to have dan roth who's an amazon recruiter we're going to talk about recruiting feedback which is a hot topic here sam thanks again and thank you everyone for being with to us to you so now thank you very much for having me i enjoyed this a lot thank you take care everyone have, have a, a lovely show. weekend